The economy is officially set to go from bad to worse. After record levels of money printing to stimulate the economy and build all these bubbles, central banks now continue to raise rates to slow the economy. A hyperinflationary depression is now a real risk. The S&P is down 17%. Top crypto assets are down over 70%. And Wall Street insider Michael Burry says this is the time for gold after predicting the stock index still has another 52% to lose. All this while the housing bubble has a needle inching closer and closer. And if you're relying on commercial real estate for retirement, there's going to be some major problems for you to face. We are entering into a critical time in global history that won't be repeated for at least 100 years more. And while this all may look very dire and depressing on the outside, it also contains a once in a lifetime opportunity that can and will set you and your family up for generational wealth if you play your cards right. So while you do want to understand why all these bubbles are popping, you also want to understand the proven strategies you can use to win in light of a complete meltdown coming up. Because what I'm going to talk to you about today are opportunities and specifically in real estate, because I know a lot of people are very interested as they should be in real estate, but let's see where we are in this cycle because the opportunity is setting up now. First of all, we are still in an environment where rents are rising and single family home values in some places, in a number of places, are also still rising. So we're still in the top of the boom market, right about here, okay? Now, there is also, once this bubble firmly pops, what we're looking for, and I've talked to you about this before, is this cup formation. So the recession that they keep talking about is more likely to be a hyperinflationary depression. But once we see that real estate is going into strong hands, everything gets shaken out, values are undervalued, that's the time to buy. As long as you are in the right place, at the right time with the right asset, meaning gold, because that is what holds your purchasing power. So you're able to take advantage of the opportunities that present during these periods of time. So where are we? Like I said, it's pretty easy to see. U.S. existing home sales fall for a record ninth straight month. We're not talking about the prices, we're talking about the sales as the interest rates rise. And we all know how committed the central banks are to continuing raising rates and so therefore popping this bubble. But the median selling price was up 6.6% .6 from a year earlier to $379,100 right? So even though sales are down, we're still seeing just a slower increase. So that tells us where we are in that cycle. That will change because things will definitely go from bad to worse. And truthfully, I mean, this headline is so perfect because next year's economic risks are already here. They don't really talk about uh, the live or SOFR transition. That's a huge risk. That's probably bigger than any of these other risks, but it's all of this money printing, this cheap money. Yeah, no, nope. central banks are now tightening. Booming China? Well, we're gonna talk a little bit more about China because this is significant since China is the second largest global economy and typically made the rest of the global economy look better but they've got their own problems for sure. And especially with COVID zero and the popping of their real estate bubble, we'll talk more about that. And then also decades of great power peace. And so as we've been talking about, we are seeing more and more um, major powers like the 
issues that the U.S. is having with China and Taiwan, not just Russia and Ukraine and the NATO allies, but many, many more. So these are all gone, all gone. And that's what was kind of enabling the powers that be to kick the can down the road. No more kicking the can. We are at the end of this road. Next year, maybe when their absence really bites, maybe so. But I want to talk to you about the unfolding real estate risk that brings the opportunity. Is that opportunity here now? No, real estate is still severely overvalued. But gold is still severely undervalued. If you listen to Michael Burry, well, he thinks that's going to change next year. Let's just keep moving forward because China plans property rescue and latest surprise policy shift. I mean, what have we been watching over at China? You need to understand that this is that the real estate is what makes up like 70% of the wealth of their population. And so they've been building and building and building and lending and lending and lending and all of that free money. But that bubble has burst with people refusing to pay for the mortgages. They don't even know when they're going to take possession because prepayment is a big uh, tool that they've used to fund these developers. But now with the central bank stepping in and the government stepping in, but here's the thing. They are not gods. They are men. They are women. They are human beings and they are fallible. And all of these things, quite honestly, they only work until they don't. And I know that's never been an answer that anybody's wanted to hear. But what you need to understand is that things aren't working anymore. They aren't working anymore. And so you want to fly to the safety of what's been proven to not run any counterparty risk, to be an inflation hedge, to be not, you know, that gold held at home is not subject to political risk. Do you think we have those things going on right now? Because I certainly do. And a little bit more about China because they have overbuilt and overbuilt and overbuilt. And all of this inflation that was built into the system made things look really good. Look at the growth in China. Look at the economic growth. All built on leverage and debt. And this is true for every asset class in the world. All of this has been propped up buy more leverage and more debt, which works great as long as it's on the way up, but it kills you on the way down. China's empty houses. So what you're looking at here are the cumulative surplus of housing supply over demand. They have a $55 trillion housing market and it is the largest in the world. And that bubble was definitely popping. So what do you think? Do you think that wouldn't have consequences reverberating throughout the global economy, especially since we're all incestuously intertwined? And for those of you that hit, that hold those fiat money product funds, MSCI China fund or funds that hold China stocks and real estate and all of those things in them, uh, I'm pretty sure you're not very happy right now. And according to calculations, property construction has to drop 25%. And yet we've got the government with a 16 point plan to prop that up. Well, we're going to see if it works, but my bet is it's not going to work. You get a little bit of a bump, but the central banks are out of tools. 